Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sports Card Lessons Podcast. With me, your host, Ken. I'm a retired teacher bringing you lessons each week I've learned in the hobby. You can find me on Instagram at sportscard underscore lessons and on YouTube on the Sports Card Lessons YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and leave some feedback. Welcome, everyone. How is everyone doing? I want to thank John Newman from Sports Card Nation Podcast for being on the show Thursday. Uh, it was a great interview. Uh, and even after we stopped recording, uh, we continued to talk, I, I think, for even over an hour, even after that. Uh, John's a great guy with a wealth of hobby knowledge. And I'm looking forward to uh, being on his podcast in the next few weeks. If you've missed any part of that, definitely go back and give it a listen. It was a, a really good episode. I'm excited to announce Thursday on Thursday's episode. I'll have Dustin Cooley, Sports Card Dad, on the podcast. Uh, again, another really great conversation with Dustin. Uh, you don't want to miss that. That will be Thursday's episode. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. It's finally here. Chiefs and Eagles. I am recording this before kickoff. So as of now, all I have to say about that is go Chiefs, as you can see by my uh, my background. And if you're just listening, I have a Patrick Mahomes jersey uh, hanging behind me. Uh, today's episode is inspired uh, from a trip I took to a card show uh, to Long Island this morning. And, uh, you know, I, I do have to say before I even jump into the episode, just just the participation. Um, I like to get out as much as I can. Uh, and I talk about this all the time. I like to get to as many shows as I can. Uh, because no matter what show, where I go in the hobby, I always find something that's either unique, that I like, that I want, that I never knew existed. Um, so you hear this all the time. Uh, participation is necessary in this hobby. So I decided to get up early, take a ride down to uh, a card show in Long Island. Uh, saw my guy down there, John, from behind the diamond. Uh, he was set up down there. Went down and check his stuff out, and uh, you know, I hit a hit a card show. Uh, and today's episode is negotiating a PC pickup. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about being a collector and a dealer, and for the last uh, you know last few years, I've been everything I've been purchasing, all my purchases uh, were really cards that were just going into my cases at shows. Uh, and after season one here on the podcast. Uh, in the beginning of the new year, I just start. I I decided I'm going to start building my PC, uh, and just keeping those cards separate uh, from the cards that I bring to shows and sell. So I may bring some of these cards to the shows, but uh, I'm not really. And if I am selling them, it means I'm upgrading to something uh, even bigger um, to add to my PC. Uh, the cards that you know I put in my case, I need a margin. Right. There's a business plan. Everything's got to work. You know, I, I can't be doing this for free or losing money. So, you know, you put a business plan together and everything's got to work. Um, and up until the beginning of the year, I'm just reinvesting, continuously reinvesting the money, the profits that I'm making. I'm reinvesting into I'm buying bigger cards to put in my case, you know, to, to, and keeping them full. Right. I mean, that's the important thing, a good variety and keeping my cases full at the shows. Uh, but now that I'm buying cards for my PC, I'm not as worried, you know, about prices and comps and margins. You know, these are hold cards. These are cards that I'm buying that I plan on keeping. And you know what? The price may go up. The price may go down. I may not even know if it goes up or if it goes down, right? Because it's they're not cards that I'm worried about that I'm pricing that I need to, you know, be toting back and forth to shows. These are stuff that mostly that are probably going to stay here, right, right here in my office uh, and, and just be, you know, just be my PC. But on the other hand, you know, I don't want to overpay for cards. I mean, there, there's no reason that I'm going to go out and buy a card if a card's worth a thousand dollars and somebody says, Hey, it's, you know, it's a, it, it's a great card to own for $1,500. Well, you know, what we'd have to meet somewhere closer in the middle or closer to, you know, what the comp is on the card or, you know, close to it. So, you know, this is what I'm doing. I, I'm going to 
purchase these cars for my PC, but I'm certainly not going to overpay for them. You know, when you're purchasing a PC card, it, you know, or w even when you're just a purchaser, right? It kind of puts you in the driver's seat because you're the one pulling the money out of your pocket and, and you're purchasing. So, so, you know, when you go off to a show and you're with a deal, you know, you're, you're across from the dealer. And now I've been, a, I'm usually on both sides of the table. Now, sometimes I'm a dealer, sometimes I'm a, an attendee. Um, I still feel that, you know, the person coming to buy, you know, at the end of the day, they need to feel good about their, their purchase and their decision. And they need to say, yes, I'm going to buy this. So I always think, you know, the, I give a little bit more to the, to the purchase, the, the, the person who's purchasing versus, versus the person who is selling. Um, I think it puts them in the driver's seat just a little more. Um, as I'm looking at cards from my PC, I'm trying to populate it with, you know, low pop count cards, you know, so, you know, pop one, pop two, pop five, eight, something, you know, these, these pop, you know, 5,500 or 10,000, stuff like that. Those aren't, I mean, some of those cards I'll have in my PC, um, but for the most part, you know, I've kind of made a decision. These kind of more unique, rarer cards are the ones I want to put in my PC. And I'm willing to go out and hunt around and look for them. I have no issues doing that at all. In fact, I kind of, you know, I really enjoy doing that. And, you know, when the card show goes on, I talked about this a few weeks ago when a card show was going on and I was in North Carolina, seriously had FOMO, you know, like I, I, I felt like I was really missing out. And I knew if I had gone to that show, I probably would have ended up with a card uh, in my PC that who knows now what, it, what that card ever would have been because I missed that show. So that, 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 that's my FOMO there. Um, you know, so an example like today. So what happens when I show up at a show and I see a, a, a rookie, a numbered an Alexander Ovechkin card, BGS 9.5 pop one. Right. The, this is everything I would I would hope for uh, going off to a show, finding a card that's like a pop one uh, and in Ovechkin because I have a number of his cards. Um, but on the other hand, the seller, you know, when the seller thinks, hey, this card is so valuable, it's a pop one and they're, they want almost double double the price. You know what happens then? Well, for me, it's time to go to work. Um And I feel, and this this is from being on the other side of the table now, right? I feel if I can leave the seller, the person who's selling this card, if I can leave them in the driver's seat during the negotiation, I know it's going to take much longer. But when they start out at, at wanting to get twice as much as what the card is worth, um, I know it's going to be a lot of work if I if I'm going to end up with this card and not overpay for this card. Um, so I'm at the show. I'm standing at a table. I'm looking at some cards and a guy walks up next to me. He knows the dealer behind the table and he says, hey, are you interested in buying this card? And he hands it out to him. And the guy's like, why would you sell this card? He goes, I'm going to do you a favor and tell you, hold that card. When he breaks the record, it's going to be worth twice as much. He's like, do you really need the money? And the, the guy's like, no, I don't need it. He goes, you know, I'm at a card show. I want to make some moves. I, you know, I, my, my case is stale. I want to, you know, there was all these things. And I'm just listening to this conversation go on. Uh, and, and he's just an attendee like I am. So when he's done, I said, hey, what was that card? Let me check that out. Um, and I kind of vetted the card. I pulled the card out. I looked it up. And I said, what, what are you looking to get on the card? Um, and he says, well, he says the last comp was about 3,400. I'm looking for about 4K on it. And I said, well, why would you be so much? Well, you know, he broke Gordy Howe's record. And, you know, he gave me a little bit of a story. And I said, are you interested in trading at all? And he said, yeah, well, you know, I'll look at, give me your case. Let me look. I said, no, no, no. I said, you know, you want to, we can go outside. You know, I didn't want to do it. And and I think that's a respectful thing. The, the thing I hate most sometimes is when I'm at a show and this happens at my table and people start talking in front of my table and people start putting their cases down on my cases. And I'm like, oh, what, what are you doing? 
pick, pick this up. You can, you know, do this somewhere else. So it was a respect thing, you know, standing there. I said, no, I said, let's, let's, you know, let's, we'll find a table or go out in the hallway or something. And we went out in the hallway and, and I, and I just want to say just a side note, some of the best deals that I've made at a show was just with other attendees, uh, at a show, uh, and I just feel, and I, I'm going to talk about this a little later, but I just feel that um, there's no expectation as a dealer. Like he he paid the same thing I did to enter the show, right? The the whatever, a couple dollars, three dollars, five, whatever it costs to get in. He did the same thing. It's not like he paid, you know, seventy five or a hundred or two hundred or five, whatever the table costs for the show. You know, he didn't pay that. So he's got no expense. He's got the same expense as I do. So we're really on an even playing field at that point. And I think, I think with that in mind, that's why you get some of the best deals done when you just meet up with somebody at a show that's, that's not a dealer. Uh, so the card in question is a 2005 upper deck victory gold, Alexander Ovechkin number to 100. It's a BGS 9.5. Uh, when I look it up, there's one comp for $3,400 back in December on eBay. And this card's a pop one. So this was actually the card that sold in December on eBay at $3,400. There was one comp for a uh, BGS nine, uh, more recent that sold for a thousand dollars and all values on this card, this particular card all had it at 2,100. Uh, and it had the PSA 10 at 3,900. So there was kind of a big, a big gap in price between the BGS 9.5 and the PSA and a PSA 10. So my target, you know, on this card was to try to pick it up somewhere in the two to twenty-two, twenty-three $2,300 range. And I felt at that time it, I, I was really going to have to pull something off because I figured he was the person that purchased this card for $3,400. And he kept saying, oh, there's there's a comp, there's a comp. And I kept saying, well, the comp is this card, you know? And then I started thinking, you know, may, maybe that comp is, is, maybe it was, you know, a shield bid that never got paid or something like that. But he was pretty adamant about the comp. And I said, well, did you buy the card on eBay? Because this is the card. The comp is this card. Um, and he said, no, no, no. I, I picked this up from somebody else in a trade. I didn't realize it was the card. I said, well, it's only a pop one. So this the card's the card. Um, and my thought at that point was, if he did purchase it at the 3400 he probably wasn't going to let it go much less than twenty eight, twenty nine hundred dollars if he felt like, hey, you know, I bought this card because I thought it was going to go up, you know, because he just broke a record and now it's may have dropped down a little bit. Um, I was trying to get a better feel of where he wanted to be on this card. So, you know, we go outside and, you know, I, I talked last week about being in control of my case, I, you know, and, and one of the, one of the reasons for my trip to this show this morning is because I had a Jalen Hurts rookie wave, you know, PSA nine numbered to 149. And I had some, you know, Patrick Mahomes rated rookie and optic rookie cards that I felt that if I don't move like literally today, Super Bowl Sunday, um, They'll get put away now. They they won't come back out now till probably just just before national. So I figured, hey, you know what? Let me let me take a run down here. Let me see if I can you know make some deals with these cards. And you know some people may be excited to pick up some of these cards. So I'm pulling cards out, and you know he kept saying, no, I want rare cards. I want something unusual. You know something that's different. But I don't want any 
player that's currently playing. And I said, well, uh, at this point, I'm really limited what I have in my case. I said, I really don't have much, you know? So, you know, I went back to a Hertz and I'm a home. He's like, no, no, these guys are, they're playing now. You know, I want, I want something like, you know, some, what do you must have some vintage in there? And I said, no, no, this, this, this is, you know, and I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. I'm purposely pulling out, you know, car, the cards that I want. Uh, and then he's like, ah, let me look in your case. I'm like, no, you know, you don't need to go through. There's a lot of the stuff that's not for, and then he was about ready to give up on it. He was about ready to like give up on the, on the deal. Um, and, and I really didn't want to give up control of my case. Um, because I knew what was going to happen. I knew what was going to happen. And it actually delayed us making this deal for probably it added 30 minutes onto this deal. And I'll explain what I mean. Uh, and, and if you missed last week, last week's episode, I just talked about, you know, keeping control of your case, because if you've got bigger cards in there, people are not going to want your smaller cards. And, if, you know, I understand I have cards in there. I, they're, they're just not a, not for sale, not for trade. They're not going anywhere. But it, people start seeing, you know, like I have, hey, I've got this you know, PSA nine and they go, Oh, well you have a PSA 10 in there. I want the 10 instead. I don't want the nine anymore. I just want the 10. So then they get focused on these better cards and then you lose the opportunity to try to move cards that you really want to move. Um, so I turned the case over to him and I just said, look, the Ovechkins, the Brady, the Mike Tyson's they're off the table. I'm not, none of those are for trade. And, and of course, immediately he pulls the 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 Brady Bowman Chrome, you know, uh, BGS nine and pulls it out and put. It in, and I knew this was going to happen. And then, but then he went through and he pulled out like five other cards. He really kept trying to pull out Mike Tyson cards, and I kept saying, "Put the Tyson cards back. They're they're literally off the table." And he kept saying, "Well, what are the values on these?" I said, "They're not even for sale, so it doesn't matter what the values are. You can just, you know put them back in." So along with the Brady, he put like five other cards out there and I'm looking at the cards that he put out there and, and, you know, to me, they were absolute stale cards, stale cards that they were throw-ins on other deals that I'm like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll sell these that I, and they were really kind of, all, all but one card was really kind of just mistake cards that I've ended up with that nobody ever looks at. And I put price them. They were almost like my basketball. I priced them right at the comps. Um, one was this, this, uh, Brady, it was a rapper redemption from, uh, the national back in 2016. And, and when I got that card, it was a pop five, none higher. And I said, Oh, wow, this is a great card. Nobody would even look at this card. And like people who are into Brady, I'd show them the card and they're like, yeah, no, I'm all set. So then I'm like, darn, I'm stuck with this card. Like, and I just, I've literally, I've just been carrying this thing around in my case. So these are kind of the cards that he pulled out. And again, they were kind of what he was asking for in the beginning, just unusual, different cards and on a Kornikova, um, authenticated autograph card, you know, just things like that. And I'm like, well, this is really good. Uh, it's a good start except for the, the Brady Bowman Chrome that, you know, that, that he pulled out of there. Uh, so I said, you know what? The, the Brady's off the table. Like I said, you know, put this back in there. I go, let's, let's look at these five cards you've picked out there and, and let's figure out a cash thing. So, but he kept saying, man, I'll take cash, but I need a big card. I need to go back in. I, I, you know, one big card for another big card. I need to come out of this with a big card. He says, I like these cards. They're not big enough. Like I, I need a big card, you know? So I kept pushing back in. Hey, we've got these Bra this Brady here. We've got, I mean, not the Brady, uh, the Mahomes here and Hertz. I mean, this is, this is a rookie red wave. You know, this, this is a great card. Um, so I said, ah, let me put that aside. And then he went back to the Tysons again and, you know, no, no, no. The Tysons are off the table. Um, and then it just came down to the end where the only thing really left in here, in there for him to look at was Hertz and Mahomes. I mean, that was the only thing left. Uh, so he said, I'm taking a big chance with the Hertz card. I said, well, you know, if he wins today, you know, the value could go up. I mean, I don't know the market. Nobody knows the market, but it is a it is a great card. And now he's in the Super Bowl today. 
So we end up making a deal, making a deal. I was into the Hertz card. I, I talked about this two weeks ago. I didn't tell you the price I was into it for, but I bought this back in August. Um, I bought this back in August for $450. Uh, and I did this with a number of cards, um, Herbert, Burrow, Hertz, just guys that I felt that could make, could make a run at the Super Bowl. Um, so this was a card that the value since I purchased it had doubled. So I was excited about this. I mean, he's excited about getting, you know, over, you know, two times the value of that card. Uh, there was the Mahomes rated rookie that I bought the card raw. Uh, and that rated rookie was at SGC 9.5. I bought that card raw um, for $140 and sent that off to SGC uh, like a year and a half ago, a while ago. You know, it was like 20, whatever to, to get that, you know, to get that graded. So, I mean, I don't think the values have really come up that big. And the other cards were just cards. When I say they were throw-ins, you know, the total of those other four cards were, was under $500. Um, so there was a little value. I mean, they're just, they weren't just garbage. There was some value to these cards. These cards, you know, do have a comp and, and, but, but the totals were really, you know, $500. I, I wouldn't even go over that. Um, so plus the cash purchase, uh, with the cash, I purchased this card for just under $2,200. So it took a long time. It took a long time. Um, and because of the current comps on the cards that he was taking, he felt like he received, you know, twenty eight, twenty nine hundred dollars. That that's that's kind of where, where where he felt that, and and he, uh, he wasn't a hundred percent in at the end. I was just like, this is all. This is the best I can do. You know, we've been out here for 40 minutes. This is really the best I can do. If this deal is not going to work, it's not going to work. Like I understand, I understand deals don't get done, but I think I, I've, I've offered you as much as I could for a card that I may be taking a little bit of a chance on, because I don't know if you didn't buy that card for $3,400, that card said it was sold for $3,400. And because it's a pop one, that's the only information I have on that card. So if all is telling me this card is $2,100, I have to believe that's a, that's, that's a better comp on that card than, and, and this is the trouble that I run into. And I understand this when I'm trying to find these low pop count cards, you know, yeah, you have no idea. Like, a couple of these cards I bought, I had to just trust that the dealer was, you know, giving me the right information on the card. So when I'm at that, I was, you know, I bought a few of these cards from somebody that I've known, that I've seen at the shows, that I've set up with close by at the shows. So I've kind of trusted in that it may not be the exact comp because obviously he's a dealer and he has margins and I understand that, but I don't think that. I don't think that the spread was so far apart that I would have really been that upset. Like, Oh my God, like somebody, somebody was, you know, really trying to rip me off type of thing. Um, but that's, that's what you run into on these, you know, what I'm looking for, these really low pop count cards, because they're just not selling. Right. If, if there's only a pop one or a pop three, I mean, the chances of somebody else, you know, selling that same exact card, you know, within the last three months too, right? Because that's, you know, the eBay and the 130 point stuff like, I mean, that's, they only track for so far. So, you know, it's, it's, and it's tough. And these low pop count cards, you, you look at like these alt value and the, those are, if the cards aren't selling, they're, they're just kind of coming up with a price, right? Their, their algorithm is saying, you know, this is what we feel. This is our, our best guess on what the price is. So there's a, there's a lot of factors that come in. So you kind of, I'm kind of, I kind of taken a chance sometimes, you know, looking for those cards, but I'm confident once I have them that they're going to sit tight with me uh, and, and, and I'm going to be happy to have them. So at the end, right, I, I felt like I was in my 
target area for the price to purchase. He ended up in a target that he felt was good for him to sell. Um, you know what? I call it work and I called it work at the beginning, but sometimes it's just a dance, right? Sometimes it's just, you know, we have to go through the motions on things and, and part of the negotiation. And I, I hear this a lot and I see this a lot and I try to point this out as much as I can. Uh, and the one thing I never do is just tell people that there's things wrong with their card, right? Um, it, the only time I will is if someone says, Hey, they come up to my table. Hey, I've got this raw card. You know, do you want to buy it? And I look at it and I'd say, Oh, the corners are soft or it's not centered or something like that. No, I, I'm not interested in buying it. Now hand them back the card, right? I'll just tell them what I'm observing. But if there's a card that I really want to buy, I'm not going to say, Oh, well, you should sell me this card cheaper because, or, you know, even though the comp is this, this card is, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I feel a little hurt when people say that to my cards, you know, they show up to my table and they go, Oh, can I look at that card? And they'll be like, Oh, $500. Oh, you know what? He hasn't, he hasn't been really playing well. Jeez. You know, I'd give you a 375. You'd be lucky to have it. I'm like, yeah, well, thank you. But no, no, I'm not selling it for that. But I, I just, you don't need to tell me anything's wrong with the cards. I don't need to tell other people, right? I just want to remain positive. When, when we're doing these deals, even whether it's, it's, it's I'm on, I'm on the being a dealer, I'm an attendee, or I'm with another attendee out in the hallway, just remain positive, right? That's what part of the hobby is being, even though we say it's work, it's this, it's that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's fun. At the end of the day, this is how I chose to spend my Sunday morning, right? And I really looked forward to doing it, and I'm excited to be doing it. So when I get there, I'm just as positive as can be, and I'm going to remain positive. Um, and I say great things about cards. You know, we're I'm buying this card from this guy, and I said, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm. I think it's going to take a year and a half for, for him to break the record, and I and I think when he does, yeah. Like your buddy over there told you, I mean, this card, the value of this card is going to go up. It's going to go up in price, but I'm just happy to own a card, right? Of somebody that is, is proving themselves, you know, I think he's what, 37, 37 years old, right? He, he, you know, he reminds me, he's like the, uh, you know, Brady in football, right? He just keeps going and, he, and, and, and he's really, I think he's going to break Gretzky's record. I hope he does. I mean, I hope he does, and I'm 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 happy to have the card. Um, and the last note uh, I'm going to put out there too. Um, when I show up with my case, like a lot of my my cards are priced right; they're priced for a show. Um, so when you're dealing, and I just want to put this the right way. When you when I come in and I'm dealing with another dealer at the show, I mean, they're very savvy and they're immediately at a low 70, 75, 80%, you know, on comps like that. Um, so when I'm set up at a show, I'm putting a price on my cards because people are just not, are not going to come in and put it you know, pay a sticker price. And I've talked about this many times. So you got to bump the price up a little. Let's negotiate a little and take it. But now when you're, when you're negotiating out, you know, out in a hallway with somebody, um, it's a card for a card, right? So we're not saying, oh, you know, I want a hundred percent for my card, but I only want to give you 70, 75% for your, I mean, we could say that, but that's not that, that, that's not going to happen and it shouldn't happen if you and I meet at a show and I want to look in your case, you want to look in mine, and we want to step out in the hallway, we should be making a deal. And that's why I think better deals can be made with somebody that you meet at a show like that because, you know, there's no expectation on percentages and, you know, of the comps or anything like it would be when you're inside and you're an attendee and a dealer, like that type of thing. So, um, so I think in this situation, we both ended up on an even playing field when we went outside. There's no, there's no, nobody with any more leverage uh, in this case. So I'm excited to have 
I'm excited to have the card, uh, as I am all my low pop uh, Ovechkin cards. Uh, so it was a great day, right? It was a great day. I got to hit a show. Um, I'm participating in the hobby, right? I'm getting out there. Uh, I'm talking to people, and I discovered a few more cards while I was there today that you know I've never seen before. Uh, that I picked up, and and I also picked up a, a, a Game of Thrones uh, hobby box, a sealed hobby box that I never expected to, you know, see. I I have been like I've been to a lot of shows, and I haven't seen many of the Game of Thrones hobby boxes, and the price was much better than they were selling them on eBay. And I said, hey, let me take that too. It was a good deal and I'm excited. I don't think I'll rip it. I think I'm just going to hold on to it as much as I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. Um, I think this one is just going to sit tight in the box right now. So I hope everyone enjoyed the Super Bowl because you're going to be hearing this Monday morning after it, and I hope it was a good game. And, uh, hey, I hope the Chiefs were victorious. But uh, either way, I'm going to wrap it up, and uh, I am going to go jump into some great food and uh, watch this game. I uh, should mention the upcoming shows. Uh, the Laz's Garden State uh, Trading Card show, La Quinta Inn and Suite, Sea Caucus, New Jersey. That is next weekend, February. That's next Saturday, February 18th. So if you were in that area and you were near that show or at that show, come by and see me. Come say hello. Um, the weekend after that, February 25th, 26th, EC3 at the Mohegan Sun. Uh, that's almost a local show for me uh, here in Connecticut. Looking forward to that. And then Laz has two shows, um, Garden State shows, both at uh, Hilton, Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, March 4th and April 18th. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Till next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.